Hello everyone, Triple N I here and I thought that um, till I had something really good to show, by which I mean progress, I wouldn't be uploading much and I have made pretty good progress in the past three days in fact. So as you can see I have my lab set up almost like an operation theatre. Three probes into my scope, three channels turned on, transformer tester, my Arduino oscillator, and I've taken as Agro's advice and dipped my 1k 10 watt load in ice water. The color is because of God knows what. It was clear, clear till I put the resistor in. And that is because I killed my load, my old load that is by not putting it in water because it was dissipating almost 40 watts of heat. So what I actually have here is my flyback transformer which I wound. So three days back I got the idea to wind a test transformer just to check out everything. So what I was doing previously was I just had the primary wound on this core and this bobbin and I was doing some extensive testing on the primary. So what I had accidentally built was a boost converter without the output diode or any output part and all the energy avalanched back into this transistor and made it very hot. So I thought I had enough of primary winding testing, primary winding alone testing. So I built myself, well actually I wound the secondary coil too. What I had to do was I wound two layers of the secondary, then wound the primary, then the other two layers of the secondary to prevent leakage inductance and we'll see from testing now whether it worked out. I have been testing this for the past three days. So hi, I kind of cheated so I got the whole test setup working perfectly so this is my transformer it's alligator clipped to these two diodes in parallel 1000 volt 1 amp 30 amp pulse uh, UF4007 output capacitor and my load my submerged load so these alligator wires I got them new and I've hung them up here so very handy all right let's turn the thing on and see what it does. Let's hope I've got everything in camera right there. So I'm going to turn on my power supply and in 3, 2, 1. And there you go. I'll zoom into my oscilloscope. This is a perfect flyback waveform. Obviously I haven't increased the duty cycle which I'll be doing but I'm, I was extremely relieved when I got this 4 months of hard work actually paid off. Now the thing that was wrong with my old capacitor charger, which is right here, was I had the output wires, well the output terminal switched. So it was basically acting like a forward converter, which was not what I wanted. A tapering current waveform, you know, somewhat like this, not like this. So that's my old capacitor charger there and now let's look at some waveforms. The yellow one is obviously gate to source, the purple one is drain to source and the blue waveform is current. So let's see what happens as I increase the duty cycle like this. So as I slowly increase the duty cycle, the current rises in a slope, the reflected output voltage on the drain increases, the output voltage itself increases. So let's increase it up to let's say 200 which is what I need. And as you can see, it works very well. So it took me four months to get to this stage. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to directly put this transformer into my capacitor charger version 2. So the one which I showed you now was the old version. This core, sorry, this bobbin obviously doesn't have any legs and I've waited too long for a bobbin with legs which I couldn't find that fit my course so I decided to give up. So right now the output voltage is around 180 to 200 I can vary it with the duty cycle. The current as you can see is around 10 amps because the oscilloscope is at 10 amps per division current slope stops at 10. Drain to source voltage the rigging is actually quite low it doesn't exceed the breakdown so you have 10 volts per division so 1, 2, 3, 4 5. Well at least the transistor doesn't get too hot like last time. So let me turn this off and if I touch my transistor it's not even warm. 
Okay, it's slightly warm, but it's not at all hot. You know, my current shunt is hotter than the transformer itself. So, pretty good performance. Low leakage inductance, low heat. So, maybe I can even get this to around 80% efficiency and above. So, my design goal was achieved. When I tested the efficiency of this capacitor charger in July, it came out only around 34% and now it's increased up till 80 So, well, that's what I'd call progress. And now it's time to show you my capacitor charger version 2, which is right here. I might have already mentioned this in design, but here it is in real life. So the biggest improvement I've made over this charger here is simplicity. Instead of having four chips, two triple five, one op amp and a gate driver, I've just eliminated it to two, a gate driver and a triple five. This is a soldering job on the bottom and the biggest surprise here is this a perfect soldering job. Well, an almost perfect soldering job. There's still some to be done. So, highly reliable. No more these jumper wire type red thingies. So, perfect continuous path for current to flow. This took a lot of planning and quite a few these kind of jumpers which go over the board. Well, I guess this is what Clay Reed would call a weapons grade power supply. <laughs> so, the transformer goes here. This is the transistor, everybody's favorite, IRF3205 and this is a shunt resistor which I didn't plan on inserting but I put it in just for the sake of testing. A huge decoupling capacitor and everything else is usual, you know the output voltage resistor, a 1M resistor and the jumper to enable or disable the comparator function. The comparator here is replaced by the shunt regulator if I haven't already mentioned. So, this is the oscillator board I'll be using, 62% duty cycle at 100 kilohertz. So, let's test that out. I just have to put this black wire which goes into the input of the gate driver over here. So, first, let me turn it on. It turns on by default. So, I'll just test to make sure it's working. And now, I move the black jumper to the output. So let's see what happens. And yep, it's switching quite well. The output voltage almost goes off scale for some reason. I don't know why, maybe it has something to do with my load. Ah, that doesn't look too good. Water still cool. Yep, this thing is a bit pesky to handle but I guess we'll have to do oh by the way I got these kind of logic probe things on ebay as usual to measure up I got 10 of those oops shorted let me try turning it on again yes if it works quite well, I must say 1000 volts. Okay, there are still a few um, imperfections to be straightened out. So I'm going to work on that and hopefully in another 2 or 3 days I'll have this board ready. The transformer soldered to it. No heat. No heat. Well, I don't know about the load. But everything looks perfect so far. Thank you for watching.